Hi guys, this is Tina Monk, the owner of Natural Suds and More and the author of the Soap Making Handbook Volume 1. Thanks so much for watching today. Um, today I am using recipe number 3 that is in my book, the Soap Making Handbook Volume 1. It's available on my website and if you have a Mac, use Etsy and if you want the print copy, it's available on Lulu and I will put all those links below um, in the description for the video as well. And for this, um, this is a you know, vegan palm free and I've done this completely vegan so you'll be able to do that and I really wanted to show you that you could do this without palm steric acid although you can um, use it, you can add it about 5% of your recipe if you want but how I do this is I melt all the hard, all the hard oils, all the liquid oils, everything it goes into the crock pot Okay, so the hard oils, um, you know, normally when I do cold process soap, I'm just melting the hard oils first, and then I, um, I'm doing this really, really low temperature, and then I'm adding the liquid oils in. And for this, all of the oils go into the crock pot. It's super hot. I wait till they get 200 degrees, and then I take the crock pot out of the base and sit it on the counter. And then after they have reached the 200 degrees and it's sitting on the counter, I'm mixing up my lye. And before I add the lye to the water, I've added 3% sugar. And this time around, I'm adding the sodium lactate after the cook. And because I'm using the vegan yogurt, and I found some uh, so delicious coconut milk yogurt that I'm trying for this one too. So you'll see how that worked out. And honestly, like I've done these recipes without yogurt, and they have still be been really fluid. So don't feel like you're... Um, inhibited that you have to have yogurt. And I've seen um, lots of people have questions about the sodium lactate too if you don't have it. Um, if you're not going to use sodium lactate, I would uh, maybe lower your water amount a little bit and not use like 40% because it's going to take a really long time to get hard that way. But And also if you drop your water amount um, like 33%, it's not going to be as fluid, but you'll still get some really smooth bars. So it's just it's up to you and your preferences. If you use 40% water, I recommend using the sodium lactate to help it get harder faster. And so I mean, there's and it, the sodium lactate does help with fluidity also, but it's you know totally up to you what you want to do. But like I said, these work really well um, without yogurt. So it's just up to you. You don't have to use it for, for these. Um, just it just helps to adding the extra water at the end. So in this particular recipe, I am cooking with 30% 30, 30 water, and then I'm adding the rest of my water into my colorants, which this time um, I'm using the non-nanoparticle zinc oxide for uh, the biggest part of the soap. And I'm also using Brazilian purple clay and activated charcoal. Now, and I'm adding the zinc oxide to the main part of the soap because I use organic sugar, which darkens the soap up quite a bit. So, if you're not using organic sugar, your soaps are going to be lighter, and you, you know, so it's just up to you. This is just how I'm doing it, so the soaps don't look so dark, and the designs look a little bit better. But, you know, and I'm just um, stick blending to trace, and like I said, if you use uh, steric acid in your recipe. This will go a little bit quicker, you know, even faster. So it's just, it's up to you and your preferences. And, you know, I'm just showing you how I do it and kind of um, just showing you that there's different ways that you can do this. And your recipes will all cook differently. And however you want to do this, how, just do it how, whatever works for you. And, you know, because it took me a long time of trial and error and different methods and coming up with things and tweaking things before <laughs> I found what I really liked. So um, I'm showing these videos to you because I found what I really like to do, and I hope you do too. Um, and also there are some really great uh, videos out there uh, with Valerie from Shalebrook Soaps. She's amazing, and her videos on the countertop fluid hot process or the high temperature hot process are amazing so check her out too if you haven't seen any of her videos um, and after I get to um, the thick trace after stick blending I'm just letting the soap sit 
and letting it, letting it do its thing. And this soap cooked um, a little bit differently than the, the last recipe that I did, but still worked really, really well. And so you're just letting it sit and kind of you're going to come back in about a minute or two and then stir. And when you do that, um, it's actually it's it's helping incorporate the soap in the heat. So it helps it cook faster. And I don't like using the stick blender because especially when it's this thick because you can burn out your stick blender. So I don't use uh, the stick blender till it turns to the applesauce stage and it's really loose and then you're not going to have to worry about your stick blender uh, burning out or working too hard to do that. So, but it's really super thick right now and then it changes really fast into the applesauce stage. So, but yeah, just make sure that you don't walk away because every recipe is going to cook differently. Some may try to boil, you know, up at a volcano like crazy on you and so it just you just have to watch it. So don't walk away. <laughs> um, but yeah, like this uh, works really well and it's super fast. And I left this in real time again, like the last one, so that you could see, you know, the whole process. And, um, you know, normally I like to keep my videos around 15 minutes. And this one's a little bit longer, but I wanted to be able to show you the whole thing and show you how well this works. But once you get to the applesauce stage, um, you just, you know, keep stirring throughout every couple of minutes. You know, just whatever your recipe does, just watch it and then work with it. And once it gets to that applesauce stage, if it, it's going to start to separate a little bit sometimes. So that's why I'm stick blending. But the stick blending brings it together and adds a little bit more heat. And that's what helps this uh, cook faster. And the stick blender is going to create the volcano, too. So if you don't, you don't have to stick blend at all like this unless it's separating really bad and you need to. So you're just going to have to play around with it and see, um, you know, what yours does and just watch it. But this worked super well. <laughs> I'm like really excited about this process. So, but uh, I'm just standing there and I'm watching this and I can, I can see that there's uh, some gel starting to happen. So I'm coming back and I'm stirring. And the stirring just helps incorporate the heat and just keeps everything cooking and fluid. So, you know, if you've uh, seen any of my other videos on Hot Process where I'm actually cooking it in the crock pot, I stir a lot. And that just helps incorporate it and in the heat and keep it cooking faster so you don't end up with hot spots or overcooked soaps. And that's why I really like this method because you're not going to overcook the soap. So... This just really works really well. But you can see, it's a little bit harder to see on camera, but you can see that the, the change is starting to happen with the soap. But this one took a little bit longer to get to that applesauce stage, so I'm putting the lid back on and letting it sit for another minute. But yeah, I mean, you can use a whisk, you can use uh, warmed up utensils, you can even warm up your mold if you want to, um, just to keep this warm. Like everything needs to be warm to help it remain retain the fluidity. So uh, you can do all different sorts of things <laughs> to make this work better for you. Just you know, I just I really encourage you to find what uh, you like and what works for you. Because this does go uh, really fast. And the, the applesauce stage happens fairly quickly. You can see it on, on top here. And it changes super fast. Like, you know, and like I said, you don't have to stick blend at all if you don't want to. Um, but if it, it just, it speeds it up a lot. And especially if your soap starts to step, separate at all, you're going to want to stick blend that back together.
you know, that me, it's, you know, time is money. So if you can do this faster and, you know, and cut down some of your making time and everything. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, years ago I just didn't like hot process soap. And I said, I'm going to come back to that because I'm going to do something different. And <laughs> so, yeah, just don't give up on it. Cause I've seen a lot of comments too. And people are just, um, frustrated with hot process. And believe me, there was times where I was too, until I found what worked for me. So I hope, you know, that you like this method and that it works for you too. And I've been seeing some really great comments and some really great soaps. And I, uh, just think it's so awesome that you guys are having a great time doing this method. Now you can see that I just stick blended till it started to volcano and then all you got to do is just stir that back down. And uh, that's what actually just finishes the cook there and it's super fast and I also get a lot of comments some you know about the lye being neutralized and whatnot. This is so hot that you don't really need to worry about it. It's going to finish the saponification on its own either way. So even if it's not completely neutral by the time you put it in the mold, it will be. So it's just, um, if you want to let it sit there and longer and you want to test the pH, you know, that's totally up to you. But I, um, I just want to make sure that you're aware that you don't have to be that worried about the, the lye being neutralized because it will finish on its own. This is just so hot and so fast, and you um, you know you eliminate a lot of the cold process problems. You know if you're dealing with soda ash or partial gel or just seizing or you know different things, ricing. Like <laughs> if you want to use um, a fragrance oil at the end that you know rices, you can add it to this. And don't worry about uh, you know the the high temperature with essential oils either because it, um, those, when you say like the flash points, when you, you know, it's like looking at them online and you're like, Oh, the flash point is like 170 degrees or something. Those are basically for shipping and they hold up really, really well in hot soaps, you know, because I've done a lot of cold process soaps with essential oils and, um, they, hold up really well and when it goes through the gel phase in the mold so it's basically just you know eliminating some of the problems that you don't want to deal with in cold process soap and then uh, depending on the water amount the cure time is faster with this too so you know I personally don't sell my soaps until they're four weeks old and your soaps are not fully cured until it's lost all of the water weight so if you're using hot process soaps um, with you know, a water discount, like 33%, instead of the 40%, your soaps are going to be harder a lot faster, especially if you use sodium lactate. But uh, just be aware that they will dissolve faster in the shower if they still contain water. So if you're um, using them at like one week and they don't last long in the shower, it's because they haven't lost all of their water weight. So you're going to really want to pay attention to that and weigh the soaps and see exactly where you're at with the water weights on those. And that's a really good way um, to know if your hot process soaps are cured and they've lost all the water is just uh, wait, and wait a week and weigh them, see where they're at, wait another week, weigh them, see where they're at. If they haven't lost any more weight, then they've, they're not going to. But, you know, all soaps get much more milder and much more better with age. So just some food for thought there. But since I cook this with 30% water, um, it is a lot thicker and it will get much more fluid when I add the, the pre-mixed colorants with water. So, and what I'm adding here is the coconut milk yogurt and the sodium lactate, you know, one teaspoon of pound of oil for sodium lactate. And then the yogurt is one tablespoon per pound of oil. And this doesn't get as fluid here. And I just added in the essential oils here and I'm using... Uh, spearmint and lavender and I also use some infused olive oil uh, with chamomile and lavender for this recipe so that darkens the soap up too a little bit but when you add the yogurt um, you want to make sure that you incorporate it really really well and I've noticed from using vegan yogurts that uh, there is some kind of like dark darker speckled spots in the colors 
I'm not sure um, what that's doing because the, the dairy yogurt doesn't do it. But like I said, you don't have to use yogurt with this recipe at all. Just the full water amount will make this more fluid when you add the extra water at the end. So that's just some of the things that I've found. And I know people really want to be able to do this vegan, so I wanted to show you the coconut milk yogurt. And it worked better. I actually, I don't use soy personally, but I wanted to experiment with the silk. So in another vid video, I used the silk yogurt. But, yeah, so, I mean, you can use whatever you want to use. <laughs> it's up to you. Just make it work for you. And then um, what I'm doing is I have two separate mini one-quart crock pots to the side there, and I'm separating it out so I can add the colors into those. And having the warmed uh, mini crock pots really help keep the soap more fluid and, and warmer. I wouldn't add them into a cold container. So if you're going to use a pourable spouted container, like a plastic one, I would um, heat that up somehow. You can put warm water in it if you want to. It's up to you. But you're, the whole idea of keeping this fluid is to keep it warm. So I work with it extremely hot, which um, is why I still wear gloves, even though it's neutral at this point. So just however it works for you. And the colors that I'm using here are um, the non-nanoparticle zinc oxide for the main part of the soap. And I'm also using purple Brazilian clay from Brambleberry and activated charcoal. But you'll see here when I um, start stirring the zinc oxide in how much more fluid that this soap really got. And it's, it's such a huge difference adding more water in after the cook. And, you know, and if you use fragrance oils, they will um, sometimes thicken up the soap. So I know some other people have um, added um, warmed up glycerin that has helped that a little bit. But and don't worry so much about it if it gets a little bit thicker. You're still going to get some really amazing smooth looking soaps doing this. Is, you know, in the last video I showed you how the rose clay thickens this up a little bit. And it still came out really smooth and it looks really good. But yeah, just make sure that you stir really well to incorporate all of your uh, colors and additives and whatever else you want to put in there. You know, on the... The sugar in the water in the beginning creates more heat, it creates more bubbles in the soap, and, you know, the sodium lactate helps with fluidity and hardness. And then what I'm doing next is just uh, mixing the other two up to the side there. And these stayed really, really fluid. I had a lot of time to work with this. So that was pretty awesome. You know, like I said, like hot process uh, fluid soaps um, are can be really pourable like what I show you here. Like I'm just ladling it and pouring it right in. And what I have, uh, Tyler made me a little stand so I could put the soap uh, mold at an angle so I can do the side angle pour. So the soap is at, um, you know, at, the mold is at an angle and then I put the white color in the one corner and then I'm just gonna pour the purple Brazilian clay part and then alternate with the charcoal. Now, even though this is still really fluid and I could pour the black, I was spooning it in uh, just to... Because I only have two ladles, pretty much. <laughs> so, but yeah, like you can see how fluid it is in the container. And 
And I did speed up this part of the video a little bit so it went a little bit faster for you. But I worked with this soap for quite a while. But yeah, I'm just alternating um, between the, the purple clay and the charcoal. Now, I wanted to try a, a hanger swirl with this side ankle pour, kind of like a zebra swirl, but I didn't quite get the swirl that I wanted. I'll show you the picture at the end, but I do know, you know, every time I try something, I learn something and then I can tweak something else. So if I can show you uh, things that I did that I didn't quite like or things I want to do differently, then I, I hope that helps you. And I'm, you know, just putting the rest, um, not quite all of it. I have some a little bit, a little bit left in the container still. But I have a mold, or a mold. I have a mat on the floor there that I bang the soap on. And I'm just going back and forth. Um, I went toward me one way, swirling up and down, and then I went um, back toward the other side of the mold, the other way with the hanger swirl. And I wanted to see what I would get with that. But I think next time I'm going to um, use less of the colors and swirl a little bit differently. So um, I'll show you the cut in a, <clears throat> in a minute. But I, I really like... Um, you know, even the extra fluidity because you have more workability with it, especially when if you want to do some top swirls. And they're still a little bit on the, the thicker side, a little chunkier side, but, you know, like I've said before, I like that. I like it to set it apart from the cold process soaps. But, you know, just depending on your recipe, your additives, your colorants, and everything are really going to affect how fluid your soap is. So just... uh just know that everything is, can affect it differently, and if you even if the soap thickens up, um, like the purple clay finally thickened up a little bit here, so I couldn't pour it. But this was, um, I don't know, I think it was like 15 minutes in, because there was a, I cut out a break there for a little bit while I was working with the soap, and uh, so, but yeah, this was fluid for a really long time. And I'm just doing one more um, line and using up the rest of the zinc oxide part of the soap. And then, um, yeah, you know, periodically bang down your soap too because you want to make sure that there's no air holes, especially when you're working with hot process, cold process too, but. Yeah, just make sure that uh, it's all even and because you don't want to like cut it and there's big air holes in there. Then I'm just using a bamboo skewer to do some swirling on top. Yeah, like I said, I don't... Um, didn't quite like how this swirl turned out, but I'll show you the picture here in a sec. I think it still looks okay, but I think I want to try some different things with it. But uh, I appreciate you so much for watching, and thank you so much. And check the links below for the description for the book and everything else. Thank you so much.